The White House has a huge problem on their hands and it's kind of like they take a step forward, but they just keep getting pushed two steps back. So Robert Herr, the special counsel that got President Joe Biden out of a huge legal mess, well, he's now being criticized for his actions. And as some of you guys know, Herr said that the mental capacity of our incumbent president is not capable of remembering a whole lot of things. Now this problem was all the more questioned when President Biden's team said no to a Super Bowl interview. Now the Super Bowl, it's an avenue that's open to hundreds of millions of Americans. Now the question is, why would a president who's running for re-election avoid it, given that it would give him such a huge platform and loads of publicity? Any ideas? Now before I get any further into this, I just wanna take a second and thank you guys for checking out the video. Also, all I ask is that you guys drop a quick like for the video. Totally helps out the channel. And I want to thank you guys for always, always sharing these videos. It really means the world to me. We just hit 500,000 subscribers and I never thought that we would be here, but I just can't thank you guys enough. So anyway, let's get back into it. So, but just to give you guys an idea, this year's Super Bowl, it had 123.4 million viewers. Now that's a record high, especially comparing that to the country's population. And that's like a third of the people here in the United States. Now, this isn't the first time that the president has skipped this interview. This is the second year in a row, actually. Now you're probably asking, why would they want to do that? The White House said that it's probably because viewers want to see the Super Bowl and not the president of the United States. That ends and they expected CBS to air just a short clip instead of the full version of the interview. Now you would think after a damning report about his mental capabilities that the president would be very eager to kind of show he's still got some stuff in the tank, right? That his mental faculties are at a point where no one would be able to question his ability to lead the country, right? But saying no to this interview means one thing to his critics. They're keeping him away from the press. Don't take my word for it. Democratic strategist James Carville, he's saying the exact same thing. The fact that they did not want this interview done for the world to see means that there's very little confidence in the president. And this echoes what special counsel Robert Hur said about President Biden. Hur said that he couldn't be charged with the mishandling of classified documents as he's an old man with dementia. Others came to the president's defense. One of them was Representative Adam Schiff. So Adam Schiff, he went on MSNBC and he was interviewed by former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. He said that her couldn't make a legal case against President Joe Biden, so instead he made a political case against him, alleging that the president had trouble remembering details from his own vice presidency. He also said that this was completely false and that the president is as sharp as a tack. What was your overall reaction to that report? Uh, you know, as a former federal prosecutor, my reaction was Robert Hur couldn't make a legal case against Joe Biden. So he decided to make a political case against Joe Biden. Uh, what he did was willful. <laughs> that is Robert Hur. <laughs> what he did was deliberate. What he did, he knew would damage uh, Joe Biden politically and gratify Donald Trump. It was a political decision that flies in the face of what Department of Justice policy is. Uh, and I can tell you this, if Robert Hur were a line prosecutor, he would mm. be disciplined or fired. Uh, you don't do that. You mm. set out, OK, you know, we could bring a case or we can't. But gratuitously involving yourself in an election campaign, uh, in fact, during a campaign, you make every effort not to do anything suggesting politics. Uh, what he did was was quite deliberate uh, and destructive and, and also just plain false. What I mean, you're right. It's interesting to hear you say he would be fired if in a range of circumstances. Do you think that he should appear before Congress and ask and answer some questions? Would you like to see that happen? I think he will probably be invited by the Republicans because they can count on him to continue violating department policy and bashing mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Uh, I think they would view that as a great political gift. But this is so horribly inappropriate. So here's what the critics are saying. If they think that what her said is false, then it would be easy to prove him wrong. Have the president on live TV and conduct a 20 to 25 minute interview. No cuts, just have him on and have a normal conversation. But apparently even that was too much for President Biden's handlers. There is a silver lining here though. So White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre, she confirmed that the president would find ways to communicate with the millions of Americans who are waiting for him to speak. So I guess we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see what happens. The Biden legal team though is not amused. In fact, his personal attorney, Robert Bauer, he said that this 
report went off the rails. He added that her cherry picked specific points in a very misleading way. So Bauer also alleged that this was a very biased report given that her is a Republican and a former US attorney under President, former President Donald Trump. Do you think that this is the case? Regarding that, the case about President Joe Biden's mishandling of classified documents has been dropped. Some people expected this and a lot of people felt that this is completely unfair. But the one against former President Donald Trump seems to just be getting started. So when charges were dropped against President Biden, the former president said that his special counsel, Jack Smith, should do the right thing for America. And that is to drop all litigation against Joe Biden's political opponent, which is of course Donald Trump. Not doing show would kind of show that our justice system has a double standard or as Trump would call it, a two-tiered system of justice. Do you agree with him on that? Now, what's kind of worrying though is that the president, President Joe Biden, he's still the president of the United States. Don't you find it odd that they're letting a man with dementia stay as the leader of the most powerful country in the world? And here's something that many experts are just completely confused about. If things are going right, it's because of President Biden. But if things are going wrong, then it's all Trump's fault. This was the case for the economy when Corinne Jean-Pierre repeatedly said that the last administration left the economy in a tailspin. The same could be said about the border crisis in Texas. They say that Biden can't do what he needs to do at the borders because of Trump. So the whole Texas border crisis at the southern border is all 100% Trump's fault. They're saying that Trump is influencing Republicans from not signing the border deal. But at the same time, 6.3 million migrant encounters have been recorded since President President Biden took office. So which is it? And so this is why experts are just completely confused as to why they continue to pin the blame on someone who hasn't been in office for almost four years. Now from Trump, let's talk about the guy that they're calling his mouthpiece, Tucker Carlson. So Tucker Carlson, he recently conducted a very special interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. There was an instance where Putin actually said that peace was possible. Now I believe I discussed this a while ago, but he's saying that former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson halted the negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. If not for Johnson's meddling, Putin says that peace could have been achieved between the two countries a year and a half ago. And if that's the truth, then it seems as if Johnson just allowed more than 500,000 people to die in this war just by getting in the way of peace. Johnson on his part says that this interview was ludicrous. He also said that we should not fall for the lies of Putin, especially when he said that Russia is impossible to defeat. Tucker Carlson was also dubbed as a traitor to his audience and that he played right into what Putin wanted. Did you guys watch that interview? Is this what you guys saw? So the Russian president did say that he was open to negotiations with the United States regarding this war in the Ukraine. However, many analysts don't think that the U.S. would even allow it. Neither would NATO because they're already prepping to kind of let this play out for a long time. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltzberg was quoted in saying that, we have to prepare for a war with Russia to last for decades on end. So it's like a forever war, right? So what's the solution if you ask NATO? Well, it's very simple. Keep sending billions of dollars, US dollars, by the way, to Ukraine and just keep arming them. That's the only solution in their minds. So it's basically saying that Zelensky needs more weapons, more US taxpayer money, not just from American taxpayers, but now from all NATO countries. Now, some analysts are confused by this statement, probably because you would think that peace would be the option for NATO, but instead, it's Putin that keeps talking about peace. Now, what do you guys make of that? Now, as always, I do my best to keep you guys up to speed on everything that's going on, especially events that impact us here at home. Now, before I go, I just wanna thank you guys for hitting the like button. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you guys on the next one.